I decided I thought I'd give you some fun millipede facts for all you millipede enthusiasts out there. And I just received two new millipedes today. I'm really excited, so I figured I'd do this video after I unpack them so you can see my new guys as well. So first off, let me let me just show you uh, what I got. I got two two millipedes, a little flame leg, another Florida ivory. These are all curled up in there, happy happy as can be with a leaf. And they each have little these are like little sauce cups. I got some some little pinprick holes poked in them. But these came three days shipping, and they came very well packaged. Um, each of these cups was individually wrapped in newspaper. And then that was all put into a little box. And then this little box was put into a bigger box. And this bigger box also had a bunch of newspaper. And that is where the heat pack was. Really sturdy, heavy heat pack. It was on top of the little box, which was in the bigger box. And then the whole thing was in the Priority Mail cardboard shipping container. And... They go out Monday, got them Wednesday, and I'm really excited, but yeah, a lot of, lot of cardboard, so they weren't sliding anywhere. I got cardboard, sorry, newspaper on my floor from unpacking them. It's just, it's a mess. It's all over my bed. But now let me, on to the actual facts, and I'll show you these guys, because you can't really see them very well in the cup. And this, this little, little container over here is where I'm going to put them for a few weeks, just to make sure... You know, they're healthy and everything before I put them in the other ones. So there, you can see this guy is just cruising around. Very, very happy. Very active millipede. Getting really washed out, though. This one is a female. Already, like, I had to take her out immediately and sex him. And she doesn't seem too happy about coming off of her paper towel. I'm trying to do it gently. Okay, no, she's not coming off. She says no. But gorgeous. I've been waiting for this species to be back in stock now for a year. So I'm really excited. And this one was $14. Totally worth it though. You can see very active, very healthy. Oh, we gonna come out. So that that is that is one of my millipedes. Now, some some myths about about millipedes is Whenever I show my millipedes to my friends, they're like, ooh, gross, I hate insects. Millipedes are not insects. They belong to the scientific class Diplopoda, not the class Insecta. And one of the biggest differences between millipedes and insects is, as you all know, millipedes have many legs. Insects only have six legs, which are arranged in three pairs of two. Insects also have three body segments. Your head, your thorax, which is your middle, and then your abdomen. And each millipedes have a segment for each pair of legs. So they have as many segments as they do legs, and plus some. And as you can see now, she's coming out. So you can see, she's actually, she's very friendly, she's very active for being in the mail three days. And they were shipped in, towel is still damp, they were still, the box was still nice and warm, and they came with some leaf litter, so they all had some things to munch on during shipment. But as you can see, they have more, more than six legs. So they're, they're definitely not insects. Now, I know she looks very shiny and very slick in this video. But millipedes are not slimy. They're not slimy at all. They got a dry, hard exoskeleton protecting them. And if she would fall, you'd hear a little a little clunk from her hitting plastic. That's just their their little outer shell protecting them. And uh, if, if you ever have a millipede that does feel kind of slimy or damp, it means either your humidity in your terrarium is way too high or you actually have slimy soil and the slimy soil could be just good bacteria that keep it clean or it could be bad things like fungus just to be safe I would clean it 
Um, something else, another myth, is people go, oh, millipedes. They must have, you know, a thousand or a million legs. They do not. There is no millipede species that we know of that has even a hundred, even a, a thousand legs. Mo uh, millipedes have anywhere from 36 to 400 legs, depending on the species. It does vary by species. Generally, the larger the species is as an adult, the more legs that they have. The record number of legs on a single species of millipede is 750 legs. So, no millipede out there has more than 750 legs. Boy, don't you feel bad for the guy that counted all those legs. Alright, so that's, that's, that's the myths things out of the way. Now that we got myths out of the way, let me put the camera down or hold the camera weird for a second because she's going to go out my sleeve. Hold on, guys. I'm going to put her in her little thing here. There. Sorry about that. I just put her in there. She was, she was going all over the place. Really active little girl. All right. Now for the fun things for you diehard owners out there who are big enthusiasts. They love millipedes as much as I do. You know, they're your little buddies. Um, I got some, got some fun things. Some fun things for you that could help them out. Um, for anybody who is considering buying a millipede, but they're not sure, they're looking into it, they think of it, I would highly suggest them, just because they are so simple. Um, my other millipedes, I can pretty much forget about them for a month, and they're still alive, fine, and good to go. So, very easy to take care of, you know, if you forget about them, you don't have to be like, oh my god, did I kill them? But one thing that's really great about millipedes is they make a really good addition to any kind of community terraria. Millipedes live excellently well with other types of invertebrates that are also decomposers. So they're really good tank mates for roaches, various different types of beetles, uh, your phasmids or stick insects, and all kinds of different kinds of isopods. So basically anything that you can keep at the same temperature and the same type of humidity as them, you can keep them with. You just give them a, a substrate that's got dry leaf litter and some bark, you know, an organic substrate. That's what they eat. And keep it moist and they get along fine. They, eat, they won't eat each other or fight or anything. Um, gi the giant African millipedes have even been kept in terrariums with crested geckos. So they are a great addition to community terrariums. So if you already have roaches and you want a little something else as a pet, you don't even need new cage, a new cage space or anything. You just buy it, make sure they're not sick, you know, hold them in something on the side for a month, and then just pop them in your existing terrarium. No extra work, no extra space needed, no extra fuss, and you now have one more pet to enjoy. Now, most people, you know, as you can see, I had a piece of lettuce, a piece of lettuce in here, which I'm sure she, I'm surprised she's not nomming on already, but she seems to be enjoying cruising around and looking and probably looking for, for some leaves because she probably, she had her leaves pretty well munched. But aside from giving them vegetables, Millipedes, they are not strict plant eaters. They are, they are not, they are not herbivores. They are detrivores. They are decomposers, which means they eat anything dead, whether it's plant matter or it is meat. So, um, the breeder that I got these guys from actually suggested giving them a meat-based fish food, such as the New Life Spectrum pellets or the red beta fin food that I got over here. Turn it around for you. There. The betamin stuff. Horrible lighting, sorry. Anything with a meat-based food. I like using the pellets because since they are in a high humidity, pellets are easier to clean up. They don't get so mushy and icky as fast as your flakes do. And I always give them their vegetables in, in some sort of a bowl. You could just use something like this, but lower, to give them their veggies. That way, when it's decomposing, especially if you're giving fruits, you just dump it out and it's not seeping in your soil, and then your soil doesn't start smelling, and yuck. Just 
just makes cleanup so much easier. I use a lot of bottle cap lids for dishes. So meat-based feast food, any kind of unseasoned, small, small pieces of plain unseasoned lunch meat, that kind of thing you can give them. Also, it is really good to give them cuttlefish bone. You can ground it up in a powder and mix that in their soil or just lay it on top. This gives them an extra soy source of calcium, which they need for their exoskeleton. Um, you could also buy a reptile vitamin powder and dust the veggies you give them with that. That's what a lot of people do. Let me get my other guy out here. This is a male. This is Florida Ivory, my second Florida Ivory. I love them to death. Gorgeous white on the side. This one's much darker than my other one, which is perfectly okay. I'm cool with that. Um, but my my other Ivory that I have, his fa he prefers romaine lettuce over iceberg lettuce. So if you got millipedes and they're not too big fan of your veggies, Try some romaine lettuce if all you'll be giving them is iceberg lettuce and carrots because I like them better. Also, I have um, some spe a lot of species. Most of my species of millipedes are not above ground a lot, unlike these Florida ivories are. And But if I put cucumber in my millipede dish, my millipedes that I never see because they're always, always in dug ground in the dirt will come up for cucumber. So I found that mine, their favorite foods are cucumbers and mushrooms. Uh, a lot of people on forums have said that their millipedes really love mushy banana, you know, when it, right when it's starting to go brown and either to throw it out or make banana bread out of it. But mine won't touch it, and my other Florida Ivory will eat anything you stick in his bowl, and even he won't eat it. He won't eat strawberry or squash either. And that's weird that he wouldn't touch squash because this exact species has actually been known to wreak havoc in farmers' squash fields down in Florida. So it's really odd that he wouldn't even eat squash. So if you really want to make him happy, give him some cucumber, some mushrooms, or some romaine lettuce. Really big. All right, um, now a really fun, interesting, weird fact, and he is climbing up my arm. Give me a second again. Sorry, look at my palm. Look at my palm. We're going to put him in, in this thing and see how quickly he climbs out. See, I got him in there now. I don't know why my camera's... There we go. Now he's in there. But a um, really, really weird fun fact is some millipedes will actually fluoresce or glow under a Halloween black light bulb. And this is most common in your flat species of millipedes versus your round, which is what these are. But I checked all the ones I have for, except for these new ones, for fluorescence. And the little bumblebee millipedes, which are pretty cheap, actually do display a little, little, little bit of fluorescence. Very, very slight. Um, they'll show a very slight orange glow. Now, keep in mind that different wavelengths of black light, so different types of black light bulbs, will bring out different colors in the same animal. Um, and what I really love about the fact that some of these do fluoresce under black light bulb is I think it'd be really cool to get a clear container like this, it's very clear, and then putting in any kind of like dark paper towel, like the brown paper towels or something, as your substrate. And then making sure it's really sealed, of course, and you can actually display this under a black light bulb. And by using the paper towel instead of, um, you know, a dirt terrarium, this will actually give you a lot more visibility of your, of your specimens. So you can actually display them in something very, very similar to this, but prettier, under a UV bulb if you have a one that actually glows and you want to really show it off. You could even put something like this in an existing terrarium with a UV bulb as long as they can't get out and whatever else is in your tank can't get in to eat them. Now, one more thing, and this is a word of caution. It was reported on some forums that, yes, while these guys are very, very communal, and they tend to bunch together even in a really large cage. They prefer to be together. 
Um, and they're very friendly, you know, they don't eat each other unless somebody dies and they're dead, you know, they'll decompose them. But despite the fact that they are considered a communal type of invertebrate, there have been cases reported on invertebrate forums of people who one of their millipedes heads got ripped off when different species attempted to mate. Obviously, they're different species, they're not actually going to produce babies, but uh, apparently what has happened to some people is their larger species have tried to mate with a smaller species of millipede and the smaller one got its head ripped off. Ow. So I would suggest keeping either, housing either your all your males of all your species in one tank and all your females of all your different species in another tank. And then, or keeping your millipedes separated by roughly the same adult size, which is why I actually have a growing terrarium. So these guys aren't sexually mature, so I'm not even worried about it. Oh, he, he found the lettuce. See, I told you, ivories love the romaine lettuce, but he is, he's gone to town on that. And there's, there's, there's the flame leg. She's right there, crawling around, cruising. But I actually have a growing terrarium. I'm going to show you these. Uh, the lighting over here is pretty craptastic. I'm sorry, and this is going to wash out a bit. But this is my current, my big terrarium. This is where my other ivory is. He's in there somewhere. Oh, he's on the bark. Probably can't. It's a horrible anger. But yeah, he's on the bark. And this is their, their big terrarium. It's a plastic shoebox with a bunch of things that I got outside and baked to sanitize. And this is my growing terrarium. It's just a small little Betty Crocker container. And that's for my small ones, the ones that are, you know, they're so small they get through these itty bitty little holes in my container. So smaller holes for my smaller millipedes and that way when uh, you're not supposed to dig up your millipedes because if you bother them while they're molting it could kill them or horribly disfigure them. So I don't bother them unless they're up which is why I got another ivory, because he's up all the time, for the most part. Uh, I just leave him be, and when I see him, great, I'll take him out, but otherwise, let them do their own thing. And, um, but I do have to dig them up occasionally, because I need to mix leaf litter back into the soil when it gets low. And, you know, so I dig them up, take them out, make sure they're all out first, check on their health at that time, make sure they don't have any cuts or anything. Because if they got cuts, i got to figure out where they're getting it from and fix it before, you know, it kills somebody. But that way, it makes, you know, smaller millipedes and something smaller are going to be easier to find when it comes time to having to take them out for any kind of cage maintenance that, you know, could potentially, they could potentially get hurt during if I don't take them out and don't know where they're at. So, yep, those are currently where they're at, my guys. The ivory will be going in here. In two, two to four weeks, once I make sure he is, you know, doesn't develop any kind of diseases or parasites, because I don't want to infect my healthy one that's already in here. And the smaller flame leg will be going into my growing tank until she's big enough to not get lost in here. So, but yep. So, if you got any any questions about how to spoil your guys or any myths, maybe if you've heard any kind of millipede myths that you're wondering if they're true or false, if you drop me a comment, I will look up the answer to whatever myth you heard <laughs> if I don't know it already. So don't, don't feel shy to message me. But one last look at these guys. That is, sorry the lighting sucks, that is the Florida Ivory. And his name is going to be Jester. Or I might use the Japanese form, which is Fuzake. And then the ivory oh, flame leg, which is, see your little head there, cruising around. Um, flame leg is probably going to be called Hishira, but it's not set in stone. I hope you enjoyed.